Hey besties, welcome back or welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're doing a fun video. So I have a few books that I really want to read. I've seen Destiny and Rachel do the random number generator picks, like how long you read for. And I figured I would do something like that. But for this one, I think I'm gonna do a rolling dice. So I'm just gonna roll the virtual dice and then see how long I have to read for today. All right. Three hours, okay. So we're gonna read for three hours and if I feel like I wanna read more then I can roll the dice again. But minimum today, three hours of reading. I'm gonna start reading The Naturals which I've heard so many good things about. I've read a little bit of it already, I've read up to page 30 so I'm on chapter four now. I read The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and I really enjoyed that so I do like her writing style. So from what I've gathered so far, it's like these group of teens who each have like a different superpower or like a natural ability to like do certain things. Like Cassie, for example, the main character, she has like a natural ability. She's really good at reading people. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Psych, but it kind of gives like that vibe, like as far as like him reading people, like it just kind of reminded me of that. And like a good girl's guide to murder almost, like it kind of has like that YA mystery type of vibe. So I'm gonna start the timer for three hours. Ready, set, let's go. To settle down Day nights and late nights Don't get around But there's something about you Something about you I like about These like you chapters Where you get like I guess the killer's POV Are so creepy But so intriguing I'm like who who are you? Who are you? Yeah I have no ideas yet No clue yet And even my guesses will probably be wrong But I must say My guesses for A Good Girl's Guide to Murder Were right so maybe I'm not a horrible guesser, but so far a really intriguing start. I'm really interested to see what else happened. Also, the champagne toast candle is literally the best smelling candle I've ever smelt in my entire life. I know I've said this before, but if you're looking for a nice candle, champagne toast is it. It's just the best candle. Like I could own 10 million different bookmarks. Somehow I always end up using a napkin. Like it always comes back to this. Also, I heard there was gonna be a little bit of a love triangle in this. I like Michael so far, but I don't know. I'm not fully sold on him yet, so I don't know who this other person is gonna be or if that was a lie. But the Inheritance Games had a love triangle, so maybe Jennifer Lynn Barnes just likes a good love triangle. I don't know, but I'm here for it. So far, Michael, like him, intrigued by him, not fully sold on him yet. Ah! Breaking love and I eat it up and it's just gonna hit every single time. When the love interest gives the main character a nickname, I just... Eat it up every time. Love nicknames. There's something about it. Hey guys, so it is 9.40 right now. We have two hours, 17 minutes left on the timer. I am on page 67 of The Naturals and I'm really loving it so far right off the bat. It's just super intriguing, like puts you right into the story and I'm really enjoying it so far. So you have an emotion reader, a deception specialist, a statistician who cannot be allowed to ingest coffee and me. And then she's like, is this it? Just the four of us? And they go, there's also Dean. So very curious, who is Dean? Is he the, the in the love triangle? Is he like the other love interest? and also what's his specialty what's his thing what's going on there very intrigued very interested michael i love michael's humor wait i'm loving michael i know like this isn't even like a romance book like there's only like little crumbs of romance but i'm eating up the crumbs living for the crumbs i don't know to me michael is kind of giving jameson and then dean is kind of giving grayson because he's like this serious like more broody character but loving michael and i was team jameson so i might be team michael so i'm gonna restart the timer again and we'll continue reading so we have about an hour and 15 minutes left I was team Michael, but after this truth or dare scene, I'm just a sucker for a good truth or dare scene. So I'm conflicted now. Hey guys, it is 11.26 now. We have about like 50, 57 minutes left and I'm on page 235. And I have to say, I am officially team Dean. Love him, love their vibe, love their energy, love their banter, love the dynamic, loving how they're working together, which is kind of giving, like as far as them working together, kind of giving like the Jameson and Avery vibes where like they were just like really good at working together and like I'm kind of getting that from her and Dean. So yeah, I didn't think I was going to be team Dean, but here we are. But yeah, again, flying through this book. I'm loving it, eating it up. It's just so interesting and like really easy to get through. So probably going to finish this book today, honestly. But yeah, I'm really loving it. And I think this might be a five star. Okay. Is it just me or I feel like she describes Michael like touching her face a lot. I, okay. You're in a relationship that happens. They're not even, and he kissed her. I just feel like he 
is overstepping some boundaries. It feels like in every scene, he's just like touching her face, you know? And I don't necessarily love that. She didn't ask you to do that. Ooh, okay, so I have a prediction. I think, so before I speak further, about my predictions, this will be a spoiler section. So if you have not read the book and want to read the book, then skip this part and I'll put a timestamp for what you can skip to. So I think Locke is the, so she's calling Locke right now and then Locke is telling to get it, her to get out and like not tell any, anyone else, which I feel like is suspicious. And then when she first got assigned into like the program, I think she was like, was she recommended by someone? But she didn't know why like they knew about her. So I think Locke, maybe Locke recommended her. I don't know, but I think Locke has something to do with it. I'm a little suspicious of her. And then at one point in the book, Cassie was saying how like Locke was like talking like her cousins or something like that. And I thought that was really suspicious too. So I'm thinking is Locke like a little psycho crazy? Does she like, she know more about Cassie in her life than she's let on? And does she have like a thing with the mom, like a, you know, something against her because her mom pretended to be psychic. So maybe like there's some like hatred there. So maybe something went down. I don't know. Those are my predictions, but I'm not trusting Locke so far. And especially cause he was telling her to like get, get out of the house and like make sure no one knows and like they don't suspect anything. I think that's suspicious. She's trying to isolate her. So anyway, let's get back to it. I'm on page 267. We have 41 minutes left. Ready, set, let's freaking go. I knew it, I freaking knew it. I called it, I called it, I told you. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, on page 276. I gotta say, I know this is YA, so maybe <laughs> I shouldn't be tooting my horn too much, but I gotta say, I've been really good with the guesses between A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and this one. I never thought I was a good guesser, but here we are. Okay, I am Team Dean at this point, but page 307, his line, what he says at 307, will ever let you in and if you want him to, because the next time my lips touch yours, the next time your hands are buried in my hair, the only person you're going to be thinking about is me. But I think I am still Team Dean right now, but we shall see. So I just finished the book. We still have 21 minutes left, so I might just start reading a new one. But I loved this book. I think this is a five-star read for me. I flew through it. I'm so excited to read the rest of the series. I'm just... I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Highly recommend. So really successful video so far. The next book I think I want to read is House of Salt and Sorrows, which I have on my Kindle. I think it's on Kindle Unlimited. Also, I have a Kindle, but for some reason I always end up reading on my phone. Maybe because it's just like faster that way and I feel like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like I have a perfectly good Kindle, although it is, it has no battery. So I have to wait to charge it. House of Salt and Sorrows is not on Kindle Unlimited. So I think I might get into this book because I was really intrigued by it and we'll see kind of going along with like the mystery vibe, I guess. But I'm really interested to see how this book is. I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about it, but from what I've heard, I've heard good things about it. So I'm interested to see how I will like it. And who knows, maybe another five-star read, maybe not. I guess we'll see. Hey guys, so I took a little break. So we still have 21 minutes left and 36 seconds. So I'm just gonna start the timer and then start uh, House of Salt and Sorrow. Yeah, House of Salt and Sorrows. <laughs> Stop. There's nothing more creepy than like little kids who like are seeing ghosts or like seeing things that she's saying her like dead sister is pulling the sheets off her bed. Why am I like spooked? I knew this was gonna be like a dark like fantasy type of book, but I didn't think it was gonna be like spooky spooky. I'm just like not usually a thriller girly. Like I'm not into like the spooky scary too much. So I'm a little scared. The timer just went off, so I am on chapter five. So far, really spooky scary. I guess like good fall vibes if you're looking for something like spooky, but like fantasy spooky. Yeah, I'm really intrigued to see where the story goes. I don't know if I gave a description for this, but it's basically like 12 sisters in this castle by the sea. The sisters keep dying. They think like they're cursed. So I'm really intrigued to see like what's going on there and what's gonna happen. Hey guys, I'm back. It is 2 p.m. now, but I feel still in the mood to do some reading. Do I use the dice again? because I don't want to feel beholden to the dice if it's like six hours. Actually, that wouldn't be too bad if I start now. Okay, I'm gonna do the dice so it doesn't get too late. Okay, four. Okay, so I have to read for four more hours today. I think I could do it. Or do I read Things We Hide From The Light? Or do I read You Deserve Each Other? I kind of want like a light book. I could continue with Out On A Limb because I didn't finish that yet. And again, even though it is the pregnancy trope, it is like really funny. I like the narration, I like the main character. But there's something about the pregnancy trope that like just doesn't keep me intrigued. I don't know what it is. Oh, I don't know. 
Oh my god, my eyes, my eyes. Look at the blurb, why is that font so small? Why? In a world of been by celestial guardians and left to suffer a tyrant king's reign, all Estrella knows is safety and seclusion. With fragmented memories of, of only five years of her life, she's determined to discover more about her past, even if that means fleeing the cruel arms that hold her safe from the wicked vampires. Oh, this is vampires, I didn't know that. I actually have no idea what this book is about. Of control weren't based on a lie to keep her under locks after all, and her desperate, I read all of that night. <laughs> Do you ever read and then you absorb nothing? I'm gonna have to read read all of this again because nothing was computing in my brain. I also want to start Crescent City, but then I heard someone said you have to read Throne of Glass and Akatar before reading Crescent City, which I usually don't follow like the rules of reading anyway. Like I kind of do whatever I feel like doing when it comes to reading, which is really there are no rules. Like there's only suggestions. I don't know. They kind of swayed me from starting Crescent City, but I might just start it anyway. Cause look how pretty they look. Oh God. Look at this cover. Look how pretty. So I do want to start it. Should I start it? But then also my mental capacity right now is very low. Like I feel like I don't have the attention span maybe for a fantasy if there's a lot of like world building, which I heard there is a lot of world building in the beginning of this book. And then it doesn't really pick up until like the second book or like the end of the first book is only what I've heard. I feel like I'm talking really fast. Yeah, I don't know if I have the mental capacity for this right now, but I am intrigued by this and I do want to start this, but maybe in a different video. Let's attempt the stars are dying and see how we feel. So I'm on page 47 now and it's 3 p.m. even though it feels so much later. We have three hours and 20 28 minutes to go but I have to say I'm having a hard time getting into this like things are happening I'm a little confused that could just be me like not fully understanding what's going on so I'm still gonna give the story a chance but I don't think I'm gonna continue it today I think I'm actually gonna go back to House of Salt and Sorrows I'm a little bit more intrigued by that than I am with this at the moment I'm just having a hard time getting into it so I'm charging my camera right now because it ran out of batteries but I needed to share with you guys because I'm reading House of Salt and Sorrows and if you've read it the bathtub scene. Spooky scary. Spooky scary. Probably shouldn't have read this at night, but it's actually perfect and it's raining outside. I don't know, like just like a spooky kind of night vibe. Now she's like seeing things and it's just, it's getting, getting interesting. So just wanted to update you guys. Also, I know I said they were sisters, but I don't remember if I mentioned that they were princesses. Cause I think this is like a dark retelling on the 12 dancing princesses and like they dance at the balls and she starts seeing like the ghosts of her dead sisters and it's just like a very eerie creepy vibe to it but it's also like princesses i just like that um setting premise it's interesting okay also i don't trust fisher i'm suspicious of fisher i feel like he's kind of being introduced as like a possible love interest but i'm not really feeling it i'm not buying it i think cassie cassius Cassian? Cassius. I forget his name. But love him. Love his vibe. Love his energy. I feel like he's the actual love interest and I feel like this Fisher guy is like like a like in Frozen where like Hans was introduced as like a possible love interest, but then like he betrayed them, like we found out like no Hans. You know what I mean? Weird comparison, I know, but I feel like that's the vibe that I'm getting. Hey besties, a little update. So it is now Sunday. I became a vegetable yesterday and I spent Friday night into Saturday, all day Saturday, having myself a little Harry Potter marathon. So that was very enjoyable, but I was in fact a couch potato, did nothing at all, but highly enjoyable because I never saw the last two movies. So I really wanted to watch the whole way through. And when I tell you, I was like this close to reading Manigault. I downloaded it from AO3. I read like the first two pages and then I was like, you know, I don't want to go through the emotional turmoil and emotional damage that that book would ensue. Because from what I've heard about it, it's like a really well-written Germione fan fiction, but it's also like very dark and extremely sad. Like, like everyone's dead. Handmaid's Tale meets like Harry Potter and it's just very dark and sad and I just felt like I did not want to be sad. So maybe one day I will read it, but yesterday was not that day and today is not that day either. So I figured I would continue on and finish up this video. So from Friday, I stopped reading. I have two hours and 23 minutes left from what the dice roll told me to read and I'm about like 29% of the way through House of Salt and Sorrows so I figured I'll probably just read for however long it takes me to finish this book and then for the next week I kind of put everything in a little Kindle collection so the books that are kind of on my TBR I guess for the week depending on like what I'm in the mood for I have You Deserve Each Other which is a second chance romance rom-com type of book I have the fourth book in the Zodiac Academy series because I haven't finished that series yet is it my favorite book series ever of all time? probably not but I like really 
really enjoy reading it and I like the romances that are in it and I like the supernatural whatever you know I've just been enjoying that series so I kind of wanted to finish that out too I have things we hide from the light and things we left behind which are both on Kindle Unlimited and I love Lucy Scores writing so I'm really hoping that I like these two more than I did the first book which I did really love things we never got over like in the beginning but like I said like I just didn't love the main love interest as much I guess we'll see I have out on a limb which I am 25% of the way through a taste of poison which is part of like the fairy tale retelling I read heart of the Raven Prince so this is just another one which is a snow white retelling then I have heavenly bodies which is a fantasy romance I have Daisy Hates, which I am only 3% of the way through. The Housemaid's Secret, I am 7% of the way through. And then I also found this new rom-com book. It's called How to Kiss a Movie Star, which I don't read that trope a lot, but I do love like movie star, like actor, like famous person romances. So I figured I would try that one out and see if it's good. So those are kind of all the books that I have on my little Kindle collection of like what I might read this month. So I guess we'll see. But I am going to finish out House of Salt and Sorrows. I'm going to start the timer. Also, I just saw this morning I got a comment on my YouTube video, my 24-hour reading challenge. The Queen Haley fam commented that she loved my video. So Haley, if you're watching this, I love you so much. There's so many ways to be happy. You can do whatever you like. You don't have to be ready. You just gotta trust the right. You don't have to be scary. I went to visit my grandparents today and we had some like cake and coffee this morning so that was fun but now I'm back and we have one hour and 43 minutes left of the timer I am on page 176 of 405 pages on kindle I'm 40% of the way through so a little bit of a spoiler section I guess it's really just my guesses Fisher says he was there and he saw nothing yeah no one was there because you were there because you are the killer I'm gonna be so embarrassed if I'm wrong but I feel as though I am right I I guess I'll find out. Fisher is very fishy to me. I don't trust him. He is suspicious. So I have 21 minutes and 59 seconds left, but I actually finished House of Salt and Sorrows. I thought it was really interesting. Like I liked the vibe. It was very like eerie, which I liked. There was a lot of like twists and turns too. Even as the reader, you're like questioning like what is real, what's not. So that was really enjoyable. I wasn't crazy about the romance or the ending really. Like I wasn't crazy obsessed with it, but overall it was like a really cool read, I would say. So I'm kind of, I'm thinking maybe I'll give it a four star. It was definitely light on the fantasy. Like it wasn't heavy into the fantasy. It was more like a mystery, like what's real, what's not kind of book, which was really interesting. So yeah, I think I'm gonna end the video here. The Naturals was a five star and House of Salt and Sorrows, I would give either a 3.75 or a four star. I'll think about it later. Usually my rating changes as like time goes on and I like think back to it, but I would say either a 3.75 or a four star. I really enjoyed both of these reads so I'm so glad I did this video and I hope you guys enjoyed and had fun watching. I love you guys and I'll catch you next time. Bye.